Hi, I'm Barbara Johnston, and I am going to show you the volcano stove today. I have experienced or experimented with the volcano stove for about five years. My husband and I have an emergency preparedness business, and this is one of the products that we have. So we like to use our products so we can talk about the knowledgeable. When you order a volcano stove, it comes like this. The things that I like about it, it weighs 19 pounds, so just about anybody can carry it. It collapses, and so it's not taking up a lot of space. All right, you're the volcano, right? Yes. We are the volcano. <laughs> so when you open up the bag, it comes flat. You're going to grab the handle and yank it up. That's how you open it. It is not going to collapse. The manufacturer has a photograph of a 250 pound man standing on the volcano stone. So you don't have to worry that it's going to collapse. In the bag, you've got some accessories that help you use the volcano stone. Um, well, you say it won't collapse, but obviously it does collapse. So how does it collapse? The beak give up. Pull it up from the bottom. Okay. So once you've got it set up and you've got food in it, don't ever grab it from the bottom. You're always going to carry it up by the handle. Okay. The things that I love about the volcano stove, in addition to how compact it is, it works with three fuels. It works with charcoal, with propane, and with wood. So first let's talk about propane. This is the propane attachment. I'm going to try and turn this so you can see without collapsing it. It may not work. So the propane attachment goes inside. I've got my little... This is what I'm looking for because that's where this attachment goes through. attaches to the burner and this attaches to your propane tank. So you can use the five gallon if you're using the little bottles, you will need an adapter. If you're doing charcoal, this is a product called Instafire. Is anybody familiar with Instafire? It's made from volcanic rock. It's a fire starting product. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to oh. hand it around as soon as I grab some. Oh, all right. Never mind. I've got, I see you. <laughs> what I like about this is it's very efficient, it will burn when wet, it will start wet wood. So if you're in an emergency situation and you don't have dry fuel, this is your, your tool to use. I'm going to put a handful, if I were going to start this, I'm not really going to start it. I'd put a handful in the bottom, I'll pass it around so you can see. And then the smaller wrap. What is this called again? Instafire. There's a bucket of it down at the end. Hand it to you. On your hand? Show the camera. <laughs> Show the camera? Yeah, I'm going to throw it in there. <laughs> How brave you are. It's too hot. <laughs> Yes, it burns. Then if you're um, building a charcoal fire, you know you need some air between the fire and your charcoal. So this wrap goes in the bottom. There are some little, um, I don't know what to call them, some little brackets that hold this about an inch off the bottom. I hate that you can't see, and I hate that if I pick it up to show you, the stove's going to collapse. So then on top of that, you place your charcoal, light your fire. Place your charcoal, and it'll start the charcoal in about 10 to 15 minutes. It goes very fast because it's so efficient. Instafire charcoal, Instafire yeah. light. Is that the charcoal. available commercially to buy that? Yes. You put the Instafire in before the charcoal? Yes, because the, your um, heat source or fire has to be below the charcoal so the charcoal can start. Think of a, a charcoal chimney. It's the same concept, only we're doing it right here in the volcano stove where we have whatever's burning, and then above it, the charcoal. Um, so then I would put my charcoal on there. I can use any type of pot that you can use on top of an oven. 
So once I've got my fire going, then here I have a Dutch oven. This is the 12 inch. Notice that it rests down inside. If you're using a smaller Dutch oven, this is a 10, an 8 or a 10. This plate is called the heat diffuser. And it rests on another shelf in the Dutch oven, in the volcano stove. And I can put that on top. You must use the heat diffuser if you're using propane. Otherwise, it's going to be way too hot and everything is going to burn. And you don't want that to happen. The stove is so efficient. Um, it's designed by engineers. It has double wall construction. So even though there's stuff on the inside cooking, the outside is cool. Well, this outside's a little warm, actually. <laughs> but it's not so hot that it's going to burn me. I can rest my hand there. Um, if I wanted to cook with a frying pan, or if I wanted to cook with a, a pot that doesn't fit in here, I would just put the griddle on top. I could set my frying pan there, um, or my pot. This is one of the accessories that comes with the volcano stove, where it's a griddle on one side and flat on the other, and it fits right on top. You can even use a wok and set it down in there. If you're using the wok, just keep your charcoal in the middle so that it's heating the very center of the wok. So it is really versatile. It would be great for eggs and bacon. <laughs> this is great for eggs and bacon. Um, the Dutch ovens that I use, you always want to make sure you're getting a camp Dutch oven. The camp Dutch oven has feet on it. Your home Dutch ovens, and the kind that you use in your oven at home, doesn't have the feet. And you, you want the feet to raise you up above the heat so that their air can circulate. This is a special Dutch oven made by Volcano Stove, which it's not mine, this is Debbie's. What she likes about it are these rings. What that does is that when steam and condensation happens from whatever you're cooking, wherever the ring is, it drips back down into your um, pot. So it, keeps it moist evenly, whereas a regular Dutch oven lid doesn't have that feature. And that's the 12 inch, did you say? This is the 12, this is also a 12, and this is a 10. The, the other reason why I probably would not get this is you can't stack with the rounded lid. With the volcano stove, you can stack up to five Dutch ovens on top. So that Dutch oven is made uh, specifically by Volcano? This one is. Oh, that one is. This one is. That, the one that has the rounded lid. And you can't stack it? You can't because of that rounded, yeah. well, it might fit. I don't know. The feet might fit in there. But you can't put charcoal on top with the rounded lid. The purpose of a Dutch oven, and when you get to the Dutch oven class, it has this rim so that you can put charcoal below and charcoal on top. And when you're baking, you'll start with charcoal below and then and charcoal on top, but then you'll take the charcoal out from underneath because you really just want heat from the top. So when you get to the Dutch oven class, he will tell you more about that. But again, the volcano stove can hold up to five stacked Dutch ovens. I don't recommend going that high because the higher you go, it's just less stable. And if you've got children around, I'm always worried about them knocking stuff over. The one thing so that's called the camp Dutch oven. It's called the camp Dutch oven when it has the legs on it and it has the rim on top. So it's more flexible. The Dutch, or the volcano stove. you stack, you have to put coal on, on top of the In between. Of one. Yeah, you do. And, and, the, and the camp Dutch oven comes in what? Either 10 or 12? It comes 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. Wow. And what would you recommend for the volcano? You, a 16 seems pretty big. 12 is a bit, I'm sorry. This is a 12 that fits down inside. If you have a larger Dutch oven, you're actually going to set it on the rim right here. So a 12 would be probably as about as much as you really... You could get the bigger one, it just doesn't fit down inside. So right. it works just as well. And it well. doesn't cook as fast then? Um, it will cook just as fast. Huh? Yep. Okay. There's going to be very But it will hold a smaller one as well, like a like an 8 or a 10. Right. So if you're... The Inside. 12, yes. The 12 inch... Leaving a trail. The 12 inch fits right down inside. 
When you're using a smaller one, use the deflector or the diffuser plate. And then it can sit on top of this inside the volcano stove. If you're losing, using bigger than a 12 inch, you're going to have to set it on the top rim. No, no, I don't want to be really dumb because I don't do that sort of thing. Why would you stack? Because you're being more efficient in your cooking. When, yes, when you've got. I thought so, but I just. That way, you're, the charcoal that's on top of here, you're using it twice. It's heating the Dutch oven below, it's heating the Dutch oven above. So you're being really efficient with your charcoal. And in an emergency, you know, fuel is one of the things that's hard to stretch out. So that's why I love this, because it needs much less charcoal to be efficient. It also works as an oven. It has, they call this the lid. Once you put that on, it's like a convection oven. So, I can make a cake in a regular pan. I use this grill. I put my cake pan here, just a round pan or a square pan. Put that lid on, and it will cook. Um, but it you has to be in a cast iron pot, right? Nope. nope. You can use your, your inexpensive baker's secret. It, that doesn't have to be cast iron. Oh. You can, any pan that you use at home, you can use with your volcano stove. Glass or metal? Glass or metal, doesn't matter. And if you're using like a saute pan from home, you just put it on top of the grill. Um, one thing that I do recommend, and I don't have it here with me today, is that there is a little hole right here in the top of the lid. You can put a thermometer in there, and that way you're able to track how hot it is in there. And it just helps you be a little bit more accurate in your baking. With this lid, and if you're using a Dutch oven and the lid, you don't even have to put charcoal on top. So again, it's being really efficient with your fuel. Put charcoal only on the bottom, put your Dutch oven in, put the lid on, and you can bake in your Dutch oven. So you have two options. You can bake in a Dutch oven with your volcano stove, or you can bake on the rack with the lid on the volcano stove. Um, it depends on what you're doing. Say you were going to grill here, they recommend 20 to 25 charcoal. If I were going to grill meat, um, that kind of thing. Sometimes if I've got a big pot that I'm trying to heat on top, I'll use 20 charcoal. For that, which is boiling away so much that I had to close the vents on the volcano stove, I have 10 charcoal in there. Let's talk about these vents right here. When you're lighting charcoal or wood, you want the vents open. You want air coming in so that you can feed the fire and that the fuel can start. And then you have the option of closing the vents, reduces the air, reduces the heat, makes your fuel last longer. So if it's cooking too hot, close the vents. If it's not hot enough, open the vents. Um, as far as how much charcoal, let's, let's talk about if you're storing charcoal for a year. A pound of charcoal has 14 briquettes in it. I use an average, if I were going to, when I cook, a 14. So a pound a day would see my family through. 365 pounds. How I store the charcoal, I have the 30-gallon trash cans with lids. I store it in there outside. Charcoal never goes bad. It doesn't need additives like gasoline um, and some other fuels like that that you're storing and it's not combustible which I like so there's no safety. I have plastic because I'm just using it as a storage container and when when it goes on sale it's I think it was on sale ten pound or ten dollars for two 20 pound bags it's really an economical fuel and easy to store the other thing that I do with the volcano stove is that I'll tag it along with the Wonder Box. So with the Wonder Box, when you get there, you need to bring your food to a boil and then put it in the Wonder Box. So with the same batch of charcoal, I'll start with the food that needs to be brought to a boil, put it in the Wonder Box, I have a meal for later in the day, and then with that charcoal I've already started, I'll make a meal for now. So again, now I'm being really efficient with my fuel and I'm getting two meals out of 10 to 15 charcoal. Yes. Sure. Mm -hmm. 80 in the trash can. I can get 80 pounds in a trash can. 
So if you've got four trash cans full, you're in business. That's out of the bag and, and just dump in the trash can. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I, I can put four of the 20 pound bags in a trash can. And uh, what is that, a 55 gallon? Um, no, it's a 30 gallon. A 30, they're, a 30 gallon. The smaller ones that are about this high. Okay. So, something that's easy for you to move if you need to. Yeah, I could drag it. And that's always something you have to consider. If you had to move it, could you do it on your own? I couldn't lift it into the car by myself, but I could drag it somewhere. Because I've dragged it in our yard when I've been cooking outside. Do you use these frequently to cook at your own place? Um, I'm going to be baking either bread or a cake this afternoon in my volcano stove. Because I have bananas I need to use up. And I don't want to turn the oven on when it's going to be almost 100 degrees today. So, um, And I do recommend whatever you get that you practice with. Because if an emergency happens and you're trying to learn how to use a piece of equipment or a tool that you've never used, your stress level's already high and now you've just increased it. So practice. Um, in the summer, I'll cook outside with this and I'll cook outside with the sun oven all the time. Or use the, the Wonder Box. Those are the three that I really love. What is something like the plug? And with the volcano stove, with the propane attachment, is 159. And then you can get the grill if you want it and the lid. If you want to use it as an oven, I really recommend the lid. And the grill you're talking about, the grill top? I'm talking about this one. Oh, right that here. one, that's an extra, yeah. right? Yeah. The, the basic volcano stove comes with the, the carrying bag, the grill fits on top the diffuser plate, and then there's the little grill that fits in the bottom that holds charcoal. The diffuser plate, let's talk about one more way to use this to make it super efficient. Instead of putting your charcoal on this rack, put it on this diffuser plate. So it's about an inch above that rack. It causes your um, more heat. The way the diffuser plate works and reflects heat, it's going to cause your charcoal to be hotter. Fewer charcoal to be hotter. So again, you're being more efficient. And in an emergency, we want to be as efficient as we can with our resources. Okay. Let me see if there's anything that I have forgot. So you can or you, you don't need to use that, but it helps. If you're going to bake, bake, you want to bake, this is what you need. Or you can bake in your Dutch oven. With a, you said the Dutch oven. You don't have to have this if you're baking in your Dutch oven. But if I'm baking in a, in a regular Pyrex pan, I'm going to set that Pyrex pan right on top of here and put my lid on it. Or if I'm baking in a Baker's Secret regular pan. Um, but the primary purpose of the is to keep the heat down on the Right. And in that case, the diffuser plate is on the top of the propane. When we're using charcoal and we're using the diffuser plate, we're putting the charcoal up here. So it's depending upon location. The diffuser plate reflects heat. So when the propane is below, it's reflecting the heat away so it's not getting so hot. When the charcoal is on top, it's reflecting the heat back up so it's being more efficient and heating whatever's above. So why would you want to use propane with a diffuser plate? Um, because your, your propane alone is going to be too hot. You can buy, and this is not from um, the Volcano Stove Company, but you can get at the hardware store, a little, I don't think valve is the right word, but a, a regulator so that you can turn the flame up and down. And that way you can turn it down. If you don't have that option, you want to make sure and use a diffuser plate so it doesn't get so hot that your food burns. Um, Debbie was telling me when she used the propane without the diffuser plate and it was way too hot. Now, just to give you an idea of how long propane will last when using the uh, volcano stove, the manufacturers were at a trade show and there was a woman who was canning all day on the volcano stove. She had one little bottle of propane and it lasted over six hours. You're talking about the little camp stove bottles, right? Yeah. That, that little size. 16 ounce bottle or something. Yeah, and it lasted all day because she canned all day on that one bottle. So it's just super efficient in how it uses the heat. And that's what you want in an emergency. So you're not 
wasting a bunch of fuel trying to make one meal. If you are using wood, this is not a camp um, fire rig. So when you are building a wood fire in your volcano stove, you don't want the flames to come above the top of the stove. So it does not take very much wood at all, and you're going to be using smaller pieces. So it's, it's really efficient with the wood, and especially since we don't have a lot of wood where we live. Mm -hmm. Is there um, a reason that people use cocaine as opposed to natural? I think it's what they have. I mean, you can use the propane off your barbecue. It's, it's just to me, it's, it's more expensive. Propane is really an expensive fuel. I don't know if any of you have homes without natural gas, but you have a propane tank <coughs> instead. You're nodding in the back. It's expensive. Um, so charcoal is a much more economical fuel to use. Much easier to store. What's three fuels? Propane, wood, and charcoal. It's just very versatile in the fuels that it uses and the methods that you can cook with it. Dutch oven, grilling, a um, wok, a pan on top, use the lid, you can bake. So it's versatile. One one thing that does a lot. You use the Instafire just as, as a fire source? Just as a, to start my fire. Okay, and it usually takes like 20 minutes to, for it to start my fire. It takes 10 to 15 minutes for the charcoal to be ready. This is hotter then, or is it the design of the volcano that gets it ignited fast? I can't answer that question. <laughs> I just know it's super fast. I like that. Uh, and how much, how much starter does it take to make? I used a handful, so that's probably half a cup. Where do you buy this instant fire business? <laughs> I have a card here of where to get it, so see me separately. <laughs> Instafire, it's a volcanic it's a volcanic rock, volcan no, if I can speak volcanic rock that has um, like paraffin on it. And so it just burns really well. And it, it will it will start wet wood. It will Yes. So on one of those rare occasions when we have rain and if your fuel is wet, Instafire will make it. Okay. Is that just the best choice? It's, I, you know, it's my preference. I know Debbie doesn't care for it. A lot of things are your personal preference. And I just love that it's so easy. <laughs> does the volcano come with a little instruction book? It does. Okay. It does on how to assemble it. And one more thing. On these Dutch ovens, which one do you recommend? Or if not both of them? I probably wouldn't get this one because you can't put charcoal on top. It's the only reason that the I would get that way. I can't but, put charcoal. But if you're, if you're mostly going to just use one and not have you know more than one Dutch oven going at one time, I would always still pick the thing that's more versatile. Yeah, exactly. That would have that has. Isn't more that volcano. strange that the volcano company would make one that? Uh, yeah. I do not know. Yeah, and, and how much are the uh, the Dutch ovens? This one I don't know because this okay. is not mine. Yeah. Um, do you know, Rob? Okay. Um, these Dutch ovens <coughs> are about forty dollars on sale, and um, I just got these at Big Five. Even the ones with the uh, the rim on top. Yeah, this is from Big Five. Okay. I don't know how we're doing on time. We are out of time, but I do have a shelf stable recipe that I made here. So you're welcome. You can see this is bubbling away. I actually had to close all the vents because that tin charcoal was too hot. Um, you're welcome to come and get some. You're welcome to ask me questions. I will put cards out if you're interested in finding out where you can get the volcano stove or Instafire. No pressure. And come and have a sample. This is a recipe called Bull Mountain Beans. How long has it been cooking? I um, started the charcoal about 8.15. Oh, so it's been cooking not that long, but I prepared it at home. Except it's really hot, so I'm just putting little bits in there because I don't want so people to get burned. It. You just it I, I mixed it at home, but then it's supposed to simmer so the flavors marry and it gets bitter, right. better. But it's it's very hot, so watch out. Oh, Were there wonderful. any questions that we didn't get answered? Nope. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not used to propane, so if I were to get to take those little camp things of propane, they would be a little bit more 
you have to be more careful storing them because they could puncture. And it, would they're they, pretty heavy, those the sides of those cans. Would they? Yeah, they're not going to puncture very. They're easy. not going to puncture. They wouldn't explode or anything. No. Unless they were going to fire.